Joy Reid. Joy Reid, one of the most honest people on MSNBC in, in that she is honest about her radicalism. She just posted a TikTok where she made clear the facts of the Kyle Rittenhouse case or Jacob Blake or whatever, none of that matters. She hates white men and whatever white men do is evil. It's Kyle Rittenhouse trial. It reminded a lot of people of something, something, I just can't remember what it was. Oh, the Brett Kavanaugh hearings in which Brett Kavanaugh, who had been accused by a high school friend of committing sexual abuse of her, cried his way through the hearings to make him a permanent member and associate justice of the United States Supreme Court. And his tears turned out to be more powerful than the tears of Christine Blasey Ford, which were the tears of an alleged victim. But in America, there's a thing about both white vigilantism and white tears, particularly male white tears. Really white tears in general, because that's what Karens are, right? They Karen out, and then as soon as they get caught, it's like, <laughs> bring waterworks. White men can get away with that too. And it has the same effect, even as the right tries to politicize the idea that masculinity is being robbed from American men by multiculturalism and wokeism. They still want to be able to have their tears. You white men with your white tears. Now, Joy Reid, again, because I'm not sure the IQ is, is popping past double digits. Joy Reid undermines her own argument. She says white male tears are bad. And you saw this with the Brett Kavanaugh case. And his tears mattered more than white, white women's tears. In that, in that case, Christine Blasey Ford, who was accusing Brett Kavanaugh of all sorts of terrible things, even though Christine Blasey Ford couldn't even prove that she ever met the guy. But then two seconds later, she says, but white women's tears are terrible too. Oh, okay. Well then who cares about Christine Blasey Ford? It's, it's pretty clear that Joy Reid just hates white people and, and she hates men. And so she specifically hates white men. Since 2015, over 100,000 independent farms and ranches in the United States have shut down. Why? Because foreign meat are robbing Americans of their livelihoods and robbing you of great flavor. That's why the good ranchers are here to support local American farms and help you make great American meals. That, that product of USA tag has been stolen by foreign countries. They process their meat here and then label it like it came from the United States. And because of these labeling laws that favor foreign imported meat, the American rancher and the American consumer both get a raw deal. Go check out Good Ranchers. They've got incredible beef, wonderful chicken. I love the burgers. To me, the burgers are just out of this freaking world. Go to goodranchers.com slash Knowles right now. Get 10 free bistro fillets. And in addition, if you subscribe, you will save $25 off each subscription box of mouth-watering American meats for life. These boxes will show up on schedule right to your door. So right now you'll get 10 free bistro fillets, which is a $100 value, free express shipping, and a $25 off your monthly subscription for life at goodranchers.com slash Knowles. That is goodranchers.com slash Knowles. Use code Knowles at checkout. 10 free bistro fillets, free express shipping, and $25 off your monthly subscription for life at goodranchers.com slash Knowles. In Brett Kavanaugh's case, there was no evidence against him whatsoever. None of, and some of the charges were so outlandish that now the left doesn't even bring them up. Like that woman who said that he gang raped her (laughs) and she, she was the client of Michael Avenatti and they were both disgraced very quickly. So then they sort of went away. But even Christine Blasey Ford, her story fell apart. She had no evidence whatsoever. Doesn't matter. Brett Kavanaugh faces a, a completely unsubstantiated, serious allegation. And then the minute he defends himself, the left attacks him even more and makes fun of him for that. Same thing here with Kyle Rittenhouse. The state, the prosecutors have no evidence against him whatsoever. They push a bunch of lies, actually. The media push a bunch of lies about him. Then when the defense knocks down those lies and shows that all the evidence is on his side, he gets really worked up reliving the trauma of this, of this night. And then they make fun of him for that. And what it is, is just scapegoating, right? And the thing about scapegoating is, You never realize that you're the one doing the scapegoating. No one throughout all of human history has ever thought, we are scapegoating people right now. The people who scapegoat others always think they're on the side of justice. And so in this case, what the left does in this country, and the left is the dominant 
regime in this country, they scapegoat specifically straight white men. It is the only group of people that you are allowed, that it is socially acceptable to discriminate against, that it is legal to discriminate against, and actually that it is encouraged to discriminate against. If Joy Reid or someone like Joy Reid went on TV and started talking about how awful black women are and how black men are the bane of of existence, then she would be ostracized or face charges of hate speech. But, But the only group you're allowed to scapegoat are straight white men. And you're seeing this play out in Brett Kavanaugh, in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, it's much bigger. Even we, we say that self-defense is on trial here. Sure. Yeah. They say the second amendment's on trial here. Sure. But there's actually this much bigger social problem, which is the increasing scapegoating of one specific group of people. I'm glad you liked that clip. Now, please ring the bell. Please subscribe. Leave me a comment. And if YouTube is not totally your thing and you're not getting notifications or whatever, head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you get your podcasts, that's going to be the more reliable option to make sure you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time.